because all the primary school kids wanted to run with him. <laughs> and he's at the end of it. He's done this massive race, and he just wants to like, really get going and, and finish it off, and the kids wanted to run with him. I don't know if I'm going to get this right, but I actually downloaded... An epic 1700 kilometer journey. One goal. Saving the lives of countless animals. Living in the 21st century is not easy. Each of us is affected by the mad rush and stresses of our day-to-day -day lives. Imagine how dull and hopeless we'd be if we could not balance this out with hobbies, passions <coughs> and values we hold dear to ourselves. Now imagine if we could use these hobbies and passions not only to enrich our own lives, but also the lives of those who need it the most, making such a difference that the impact of our actions will be lost for generations to come. the Animal Protection Board. Uh, this was Beauty Without Cruelty. They had a march in town. Um, I don't know if any of you were there. Also, we were involved um, online in getting as many people together to actually put their word into the bill. Our Animal Rescue Conference, which I think was the highlight of my year this year, was held at Keller Williams in Durbanville. I stand under correction. We had how many rescue organizations present? 44. 44. And I think 112 people present. No. The topics was effective fundraising, feral cat companies, sustainability of an MPO, compassion fatigue, masterization, and responsible home emergency first aid. 
in chemo hygiene. We had sponsorships up to 80,000 grand for this conference. It was remarkable, and we had first aid medical kits made for all the participants, so that they've got a kit in their car, so if they come across an animal that's been injured, or they find an animal roaming, lost in the road, they need assistance. There was a Dogs for Dogs provided leads, so we had leads, there was emergency thermal blankets, F10, uh, bandages, there was, <laughs> the list is endless, but they had these huge medical kits to go back with. And there's the whole work of the year. I must admit, the, the next conference, we're going to have another conference next year, and I really hope to see you guys there. <coughs> then recently we had the rock concert at your quest for um, what was their name? Lithium. <laughs> <laughs> and there was uh, two other bands, but it was a mellow transition into Lydia. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was it was very successful, and so so much so that we're going to be hosting another. Um, it was one of our pending projects. Uh, please join us firstly on the Moonlight Walk on the fifth of October. Put it out there. Um, the walk is going to be headed by the SPCA. They're going to take us, lead us on the walk. <clears throat> People are going to have stalls there to sell their wares. Um, the weather, I think, in October will be a lot friendlier. And it's a great time and a great place for people to come together with their, with their companion animals and meet other people and good time for the dogs as well. Then Hillcrest Collie, another concert, six bands. And I envisage it to be like something in the picture, so it's, it's going to be epic. Upskilling and knowledge of sharing directly benefits animals, right? We know that personal and organizational expansion and development, guidance and support, resource exchange and assistance, knowledge, skills, education. And this whole week, that word collaboration has been coming in various forms. And I was thinking, you know, People need to learn to unite. We come together as one voice. It, it, it would be something else. Brainstorming, sure. There's some brilliant minds out there. And we're all, in a way, like-minded. But we're sure to meet people who have thought of something that you haven't even been to, to believe or imagine. Comparison of case studies, very important. Problem solving, education, key have to press on education in our welfare and out there in the communities. You know, most of our programs we want to involve, we do involve communities and improve decision making. I don't think there's enough compassion in the world. It's something that we all need to work on even daily. I think everybody's born with it. And you are either stripped of it as you get older. Um, but this is key. If you don't have compassion, you have no, no place working with animals or how you can walk the talk. There's lots of ways you can look at this. You can either become involved as a volunteer or you can become involved as fundraiser. I mean, there's so many ways you can walk the talk. Animal welfare has so many spheres that you can tap into, and we need to approach it in a holistic view, and you need to deal with it in all aspects. So, if there's any ideas you'd like to throw at us, that'll be great. We welcome.